Welcome everyone. How's everyone doing today? Everyone's been having a good day. Hold on a second, let me. There we go. Just making sure that for some reason. It is, oh, I didn't change the title. Let's get the title corrected here. Oh, no, that's correct. Never mind. Look, at, I was thinking it was uh, what I was working on the other day. No, that is what we're working on today. All right. Welcome, everyone. Let's <laughs> start it all over again. How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. It's been, uh, been an interesting morning this morning. Uh, so we, uh, my work, we're, we're dealing with a lot of big data issues. And, and when I say big data, I don't mean big data as in loop type big data. Um, but we're, we're skirting this uh, one terabyte database, which they, really we're not so much worried about one terabyte. The problem we're having is there's some cost implications we go over that one terabyte uh the way how the azure uh, levels work is for us to move up their storage requirements just sets us a whole different world so we're we're trying to avoid that and and uh so we're this morning we had a really good discussion of how can we what can we do and more importantly how can we archive things because that's the other thing we're, we're finding we're some of our tables are, are just getting so big that uh it's slowing down performance um now <laughs> I really love this company because when we talk about slowing down performance, it means something is taking, you know, maybe uh, maybe a second and a half instead of the, you know, half a second it should be taking. We're, we're extremely before performance conscious. Um, but yeah, so had a really good discussion. We talked some really good things. And, and I think the great part, and this is why it's great to, to brainstorm on things, right? So we, we weren't even talking about, okay, what are we gonna do is, what can we do? What are the things we can do with this? And, you know, we uh, one of the things we do is, you know, we have content, you can mark up the content. And we were talking about ways how we could actually make that a lot smaller. And uh, and then we're, oh wow, if we do this, it, you know, it reduces our biggest table, uh, which in itself is a quarter terabyte. Uh, and then we could do some other really nice things uh, to include probably improve performance because we wouldn't be sending so much data back and forth. And yeah, just, you know, good conversations. I, I think the key thing to share along with that is, you know, especially if you're a tech leader, make sure you foster discussion, right? Um, I, I went in there, I mean, great, I definitely did not have that idea in my head, but I went in there with some set ideas, some things we could do and uh, which most of those we're gonna make the next step. We're gonna start some uh, perfect concepts on how to work that. Uh, but by allowing the team to give their own ideas, right? We were able to come up with some other interesting things. So um, let's move on to the news because that's really all I've got to for that. <laughs> So uh, sure enough, actually, I did forget uh, one thing before I talk about news. It's kind of funny. So right as I was going off air, um, we, we got that uh, you know, Greg uh, of uh, Levenheim uh, uh, followed. Um, probably not on right now, but definitely wanted to, uh, to thank Greg for following. It was so funny. I mean, literally, the moment I clicked the stop stream button, that alert came up. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, hell, you know, just you know, a moment too late. But uh, so that was great. Um, really appreciate everyone who follows and sticks around for things. All right, so I just realized I don't have chat open up, which meant I didn't see Sean talking about how he loved that intro. <laughs> Although I screwed up the intro, I didn't have the the, the music playing at first. Um, still trying to get used to the new Go XLR. Trying to figure, you know, getting used to how that works. All right. Uh, so some news we have here. Um, oh, let me. Okay, yeah. So I talked about this last week, right? Um, although I, I think Microsoft's getting hit a little bit too hard over the head uh, over this, but sure enough, it is an issue, right? They, you know, they, you know. So this is the whole thing of of the new Winget thing. Uh, so you heard the press? Yes, yeah, so the pretzel was playing beforehand. Um, 
You heard the uh, sound included in the intro. You probably only heard, yeah, but not the whole thing, because I didn't have the... Or if you did, then I got for I maybe have a different setting. Oh. I know why you... Okay. I know why you heard that. Good. Good to know. That it means I don't necessarily need my system sounds on for that audio to get played. And I know why. Because that audio is actually embedded into the video. Uh, all right. So, sure enough, talking about this. Um, so you got Winget, you know, recently announced or, you know, they're, they're in this published and sure enough, they, you know, so about, uh, what, almost a year ago, they contacted the guy who, who wrote AppGet and apparently they contacted some other folks too, but, um, and they talked about the possibility of doing an AccuHire. So the whole idea where we rehire you, um, really to, you know, uh, Part of the hiring were, were acquiring that technology you'd been working on and you know things just didn't work out and then the interesting part is you know uh this guy I, i'm i'm drawing blank in his name right now um i know it's in here oh because i want to give him credit uh keevan uh boogie I, I, or Bajai, i'm butchering that name i know i am you know, so they approached him, they talked to him about uh, potentially hiring him, acquiring, you know, AppGet to, to incorporate into, you know, what is now Winget. That didn't work out. I mean, the interesting part is that the guy, you know, he, uh, he uh, Kevin, he, uh, he realized after talking to him, he didn't really want to be, you know, he didn't really want to make that move. Um, but, uh, and it really, the part he was upset about was the fact that, uh, I think so much that they, they took his ideas, but that they uh, they barely gave him any credit at build, and, and you know so that has started a big backlash. Um, and I, I can tell you, you know, on the MVP uh, email list, it's been a big topic all over you know all weekend. Um, you could hear about that, and um, or you could read about it, I should say, and you know lots of discussion back and forth and. And really, you know, from the MVP's point of view, and of course I can't share the emails because of NDA, but you know, the, the whole point of view from the MVP's was, you know, look, we're we're you know, we're your cheerleaders, and we we're having a hard time cheering this one. I mean, this is this is something we're having a hard time with. And you know, I think Microsoft is realizing that they kind of screwed up a little bit, which is talked about here, but it says they didn't they didn't apologize. Um, sure enough, this is the article that of the blog, you know, article that a lot of the news is reporting on where, you know, they did say, hey, you know, I mean, they say they, they kind of dropped the ball. Um, you know, they should have acknowledged him more. And the fact that they did take these ideas based upon conversations they had with him. Um, I don't know, it, this is definitely, this is something that needs to be handled better. You know, um, I think it's hard for these large corporations who, you know who who don't have all the ideas right you know they depend on others for ideas um and you know you see where sometimes that it, it, you know causes some issues like it did here um so i hope microsoft can can do some things to uh you know to make this better because you know not, i don't think anyone on any side wants to see anyone be hurt by what happened here so definitely a lot of interesting reads there, you know, seeing what's going on there. Moving on to some other news. So this was interesting. Uh, so sure enough, if you have an Android phone, which I, I don't, so I, I wouldn't want to test this on my phone anyways. I, I use an I, iPhone, but uh, so don't set this image as your background, <laughs> as your wallpaper, I should say. Uh, it will crash your phone. Kind of interesting, basically, it wasn't intentional. I mean, it was it, uh, apparently it was just it was just an image that, that got posted, and, and someone put it as their wallpaper, and all of a sudden it crashed the phone. Um, and the only way to to fix the phone was to do a hard reset. And so apparently, uh, while I talk about the the using the sRGB colors, you know, end up uh, screwing up the, the phone. So it's interesting. See how how devices can be affected by things you would never think of, um, and really, just thinking on top of my head, 
this kind of makes me think, you know, when our testers, when they test these weird things, we're like, why would you ever bother with that test? Here's a perfect example. Why would Android, why would Google ever think of testing certain, uh, certain color schemes and in, in an image as a wallpaper uh, would cause problems? And the interesting part is you can view this image on your phone with no problems. It's just when you set it to wallpaper, that's when it causes problems. So, uh, you know, it was just, you know, really, really interesting to see that and, and you know, understand how, how the strangest things can, can cause issues. Uh, next up, we have a uh, publisher suing the Internet Archive over the Open Library ebook lending. So, you know, Internet Archive, I mean, this is a, a really interesting organization. You know, we can go to ar archive.org. And, you know, I mean, here's what they're really known for is the Wayback Machine, you know, which is really nice because I can, you know, I can say uh, copalooza.com. Uh, and here you go. We can see archives all the way back to 2010. I'm almost scared to see this. So here is the first archive picture or you know, archive of the Copalooza website they took. Um, I don't remember what this looked like. Come on. So apparently that's, that's all we're gonna get. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of clicking. I, so, uh, Early ours doesn't work very well in archive, which just happens, right? You know, um, archive does a good job of getting things out, but sometimes uh, things don't come across well or go slow like it's going. At any rate, so they're in a little bit of trouble over their open library ebook lending. Now, uh, I um, kind of knew this was there. I didn't really know much about this, but uh, but they're really in trouble for number one. It's not actually ebooks. It's uh, they're they're actually scanning physical books, and then they're allowing you to 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 borrow those. And apparently, what really got them in trouble, um, or at least got them recognized again, was uh, because of COVID. They they <clears throat> no, excuse me, because of COVID, they they uh, released a lot of restrictions. Well, you have, I think it's five publishers who were, who were very upset about this. Um, four publishers. Hatchet, Penguin, Random House, Wiley, and HarperCollins. And they're basically saying, look, this is just, this is just cop, this is a copyright violation all the way, you know, through and through. Um, and, and I don't know, I think they have an interesting point. You know, I, I, I highly support the Internet, the internet Archive. Um, Especially Wayback Machine. I use that, uh, you know, every couple of months. I, I have some some reason why I need to use that. But this is this is interesting in in, in what the you know, what they have to say in here. Um, you know, and, and they're talking about well, this is the way how libraries have done it. I don't know. I I'd, I'd be curious. I I actually almost reached out to a, a librarian friend of mine uh, this morning, but I, I just didn't get a chance because I was curious what he had to think about this. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, is this is this not a violation, or 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 is this okay? I mean, is it, is this just like a library? Um, you know, working for a company that is you know we're not dependent on on publishing, but that's one of the things we do, right? We we do publish a book um, through a through an actual publisher, right? We write the book, we edit the book. Um, yeah, I you know. Kind of interesting to see what this had to say. Up uh, next one we have in here. This is, you know, there's been a lot of privacy concerns about the contact tracing apps that are coming up. Apparently, at least in the UK, there is talks of keeping this data for two decades, so 20 years. Now, wow, that is, that's a little bit excessive, right? And, you know, sometimes I, I don't necessarily agree with all these uh, privacy issues um definitely think we need to let me i should state that the correct way we definitely need to make sure we're conscious of privacy issues sometimes we i think we go a little bit overboard um i know there's a lot of concern of the 
of the whole idea of contact tracing. But sure enough, with something like COVID-19, it's it is the best way to to prevent flare-ups. Um, you know, by knowing who who all uh, someone who catches it, who all they've been in contact with. But uh, uh, the neat, the notion of keeping data for twenty years. Number one, like I say, I, I'm you know I, this morning I had a conversation of how we archive data that's five years old. Right? They're talking about wanting to keep data for twenty years. That's a, that's a lot of data they could be keeping around. So I I, I would definitely want to follow along with this, see how they're going to handle this. Um, Grant you, this is in the UK, um, so it's a, you know, it's not the same issues we we're potentially having here. But could be right, and I'd like to see how that continues on. Uh, next one, and I, I'm going to tread this a little bit lightly. Um, I mean, sure enough, we've got a lot of problems going on right now uh, here in America, um, and you know, one of the, one of the things going on, is, you know, you, you've got the president who, who's sending some messages uh, that are very blunt. You know, you know, try I'm choosing my words wisely. Um, you know, I, I've stated this before. I, I'm, I'm pretty conservative. Uh, I definitely do not agree with what the president says all the time. Uh, sometimes a lot of the time. You know, he, he definitely needs to, to learn, you know, watch what he says. But with that being said, this gets into a whole interesting situation of how, you know, how do we, how do we censure a, a Sitting president, uh, but the same rate. So you, you got this whole issue that Facebook, so far, has decided not to not to mark things that the president has said, um, as, you know, uh, similar to what Twitter has been doing. But Twitter has fact checked one or two of his tweets, um, and then like one of the tweets they've marked as, as promoting violence, which. The moment they do that, you can't share that tweet. You can't, you know, you have to click, you know, accept it to even view it. Uh, it definitely impedes, you know, how effective that tweet is, uh, which is the point. Uh, whereas Facebook so far has decided to kind of take a, a, a back seat and, and, you know, you know, there, there's a the whole thing in here, uh, you know. Zuckerberg is saying he's struggling how to respond, you know, and again, it's, I think it's difficult because you are talking about the president of the United States um, and you're talking about politics, right? You know, you gotta be careful with politics. But I, I, I've been seeing this on Twitter. I've been seeing, I've seen several tweets from, from Facebook employees who, who either are very upset or who are leaving the company because of the stance. And, you know, that is definitely an interesting situation to be in. To, to be so upset with your company that, that uh, can't work for them anymore. I, I applaud those folks, right? Uh, whether you agree with, with what Facebook is doing or not, the fact that you've got people who have their own conviction, you know, to say, I just, I just can't agree with this, I can't work here anymore. That That is, that I think is, is worth applauding. Uh, so, Definitely think we'll see some more on this. I, 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 I gotta admit, I wonder if by the end of the week there's not changes with Facebook. Just, I, I think this is just too much for them not to ignore. So, all right. So that's the news I picked out. Um, you know, things I saw this morning that you know that were definitely worth interesting or worth. Uh, yeah, they are definitely exercising their freedom. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we. we um, Sure, no, I'll go, I'm not going to go too much of a soapbox, but, you know. But for those who don't know, you know, I, um, I did serve in the Marine Corps. Uh, and one of the things we, we learned uh, as, as military members is, you know, I mean, we, we, we end up, and number one, we end up losing some of our freedoms, you know, in order to fight for other people's freedoms. But the one thing, um, and, and not, and I got to admit, not every military member learned this the right way, but in my mind, at least, you know, um, you have to understand that we might not necessarily agree with the way, you know, with everyone's uh, uh, thoughts and, and beliefs. You still have that right to, to express that thought. Generally, you still have that right to express that thought and belief, right? You know, I, uh, look, 
we, we got you know as i mentioned we got some really pro big problems going on here in america uh last several days in particular and i definitely do not agree uh with everything that's been done um but with it being said i do agree with the rights um to an extent of what's being you know, of what's being said um along with i mean you, you know they're not wrong right? i mean I, I i don't i don't see how you could defend uh and i really haven't heard anyone defend you know what that uh what that police officer did in soda and, and you know since i have really good conversation with my brother about this um it's funny i i'm uh i'm definitely you know like i say i i lean right the rest of my family is definitely left leaning um, and my brother is way off on the, on the other side of the lane. And we were having a really good conversation about this uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and I told him, I said, look, it's one thing for, for that guy. What really gets me is also the folks that, you know, the, the other police officer was just watching it. My goodness, why, how could you just have done that? But uh, uh, yeah, but that's really all I'm going to stick with that. I, I really do want to keep this a tech focused uh, uh, stance. Even this article really isn't that tech focused, other than it's a major tech companies. Um, my point of, of this is, you know, we do, you know, as employees um, of companies, you know, we, we do need to hold our companies uh, accountable to our beliefs, right? And, you know, and I see this people who, who continue to work in a company, they're miserable. And they're miserable because they, they don't agree. With what their company's doing, and, and grant you, uh, you know these folks who I've seen who who have left Facebook, I think they're privileged in the sense that they were able to do that. Because not everyone's privileged to just leave the company you're working for because you. Um, I can tell you, I I was in a situation once where I, I was just so upset. It really wasn't with my company; it was with the customer we were dealing with, and I so badly just wanted to just leave and not come back. Um, and you know i remember taking a walk right walking around the building and such and, and thinking it was like you know what do i do and um, of course part of it was well i got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> and so I, I i didn't i didn't leave um i i did take a stance i you know i basically there were there were some things that some of the government employees wanted to do which was just uh you know it was just waste and abuse and, and i did I did take a, you know, I took a different stance. Instead of leaving, I, you know, I took a stance of we need to make this change. This isn't right. The point is, is you, know, you need to do that. All right, let's move on to to code. All right, let's let's get back to where we want to do, and where we were at is uh, oh, I thought I have Visual Studio open up. So yesterday we were we were working on on the script, right? Um, and again, there aren't, there aren't actually scripts within Grammarly. You run the commands individually, but, um, but we're building the base schema for what we're going to need for uh, the sessions and speakers within Copalooza, within Copalooza website. And what I want to do now, I want to I want to divert a little bit. We were building this, but now I want to build a quick little utility that will uh, that basically can read this .gremlin file. And like I said, I made that file up. Um, but we'll, you know, basically read through each line and run those those uh, those scripts individually. Um, it will have to be line based because there is there is no, uh, no semicolon. There, there's no line in the. Uh, actually, I think in my head I could add that. Maybe I could do that. That way, even though quote unquote, it's not about. Uh, Gremlin syntax, but I can strip that out. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it as a per line. I, I think that makes sense. Um, all right, so I <laughs> I started to do something a little something last night. I didn't get very far. Um, I did get a little bit farther than what this looks like. I was playing around with something. I actually ended up putting in another console app because I just want to mess with something. But what I'm gonna look at, so if we go back here, sure enough, yeah, here is the article in Microsoft Docs that talks about how to build uh, a .NET application uh, using Cosmos DB, right? 
and you know you can see in here all they're, they're doing something very simple it's a console app um here let's actually just go to the github library on this one um so everything happens to be in here so you can see they're they're creating a dictionary you know with a basically a short string of what they're doing and then the the uh, gremlin code, right? And and so they're adding that into this dictionary, and then once they've done that, um, well, actually that's a static they're they're creating, and then they're they're just uh, they're creating their their client, and then they're they're uh, writing each individual line with an action. So we're we're gonna take this and we're gonna use this as a basis. Um, of this little utility we'll, we'll write. And sure enough, going back over here, so if you remember, uh, I think it was a week before I was working on this Cosmos Gremlin ORM. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that some more, but I'm gonna work it in the Copalooza project. And then, you know, whatever I get working there, I'll move over to that other, other repository. But, you know, this way I can keep everything together and, and Test it as we go. So I did go ahead and create you know that. That's why you see Taylor learn or Taylor and code dot cosmos gremlin ORM. Got the namespaces set up. Yeah, you know, so I did that much. You now like I said I did build a quick loop app just uh console to test some things last night. Um I thought about streaming it, um, but actually I didn't get to it until very late last night. Um and I wasn't even sure how long I was gonna work on it. Um because I when I got when I went back to my computer, I actually start fooling. So I, I can't remember if I mentioned, but I've got my my ATM mini that I'm running my cameras through um, right now. I just have the one camera, but you know, there'll be more later on. And um so it's a USB C connection, and I go to plug into my USB C uh port on my computer and it doesn't work. Right, but I plug in another computer works just fine. Um, so I was tracing cables last night. Apparently, you know, on this computer, they didn't plug in. Uh, uh, well, I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. The cable that looks like it's going to the USB C port um, doesn't, pl it doesn't plug in anything else, but it also is not a USB C uh, header cable. So I, I, I can't figure it, it looks more like a SATA cable. So I don't know, I've actually filed a claim with the or support ticket with the company that built the machine. I'm waiting to hear back on that. So I, I spent a bunch of time, you know, looking at some mix schematics and trying to figure out what, you know, why this connection wasn't working. I am actually using it. I did buy a, a USB-C to USB adapter. Um, and hence, you're now on, on that camera. Um, I can't really show anything off because like I say, at the moment, I just have the one source hooked up to it. Um, I actually do have a cable running so I could hook up a laptop so I can run presentations off of it. Do some nice things with that. But uh, uh but at any rate, that's why I did you know I, I finally got working on this around eleven thirty on this code and um I actually decided I want to watch some TV at the same time. That's the reason that was the real reason why I didn't stream. But anyway, so I started to create this. So um let's go back here. Let's actually, I'm not going to worry about copying this dictionary. Let's copy most everything. Actually, we can go ahead and just copy everything. And then we'll delete as we go. Uh, not include that bracket. That bracket. There we go. Copy that. And so I am going to put this inside the ORM. I'm going to allow you to just run a uh, uh, query as it is. The ORM is going to need to do the same thing. This is just, yeah, you know, I'm just going to make this public so it, you know other things could use it. And so um, we'll just go ahead and copy all that code in here. Um, and give me a couple layers. One. I'm pretty sure I didn't add the NuGet package. I need.
No, I did. Okay, so I do have gremlin.net. So you do need gremlin.net. Uh, uh, I mean, there are other libraries, but this is this is the official one from Apache, right? So it's not a it's not specific to Cosmos. It is specific to Gremlin itself. I have heard rumors, and I don't know if I'm actually allowed to say it, but I'll say it anyways. Um, that Osmo or the Azure team is looking to build a Osmo specific SDK that uh, supposedly will be a little bit faster once they can get it done. Uh, but I haven't seen it yet, so maybe they're not actually going to do that. Um, all right. So I do know, I mean, I see we're getting some other issues. I mean, we have a system in here. Whoops. System. We need system. Dot, oh, I can't type today. System dot collections. Uh, um, collections. What do I need? Oh, collections generic. And um, I know I need using Gremlin. And we need uh, using system.task, uh, threading. This is why I normally just right click on things. And, uh, okay, what else is. Okay, I need that one. I just done this to begin with. Okay, there we go. There, now we now we have, uh, oh no, we, don't, we still don't have something compiling. Uh, not sure why that wasn't static in the example. Okay. What else we missing? There we go. So just copy and paste. I probably should copy the usings from, from the example. Um, all right. So you can see we're, we're using uh, Gremlin Net Driver, Driver Exceptions, uh, Net Structure, IO, JSON. So I mean, you know, and really, if I'm just executing some things, I don't need all of that. But we're returning some things, and, and we're going to do some things with that. Um, all right, so we can see we have the configuration variables. I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out. Will give me an error, but that's okay. Um, so then take what we've got here and in this main oh, let's just do this uh, so instead of a void main we're going to do a public and it's going to be void for the moment but we're going to, we're going to change it is going to return something because uh, we're, we're running queries queries are not necessarily a read only queries could be uh, returning something uh, and then we'll do a string like that that's great. Uh, we will leave this as is. I'm going to change. Let change this. I generally don't like pluses. I like doing it like this. So you know, with dollar sign in there. So yes, slash database database slash collection slash container. Um, uh, get rid of that. Oh, I didn't turn my music back on. There we go. A little bit of music. There. Um. A little bit more. There we go. Um. We're going to do that. Now, actually, what I want to do. Let's leave that for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and no, we'll leave it like that too. There. 
then it'll be easier to read. Okay, so in here, we're going to create our Gremlin client. Here, let's move this to the newer syntax. Use the new ground, uh, the new using syntax along with some other uh, C sharp eight things. All right, so in here, uh, okay, so here it's trying to I think about a lot of comments. In here. Clean this out. I'm not gonna. Well, I should. Well, I'm doing this for a reason. That would be a good way of doing it, is putting those uh, environmental settings, but that's not really way how I want to do this. Okay. So now in here, you can see this is running for each query because it's going through that collection. So we can uh, uh, let's see here. Really, we want to pull out this, and this. Get that, get that back. Okay. So we've gotten our client. We uh, now in here. So actually, need to go down and submit request. So submit request is taking in that. Key value pair. Instead, we're just going to send the actual query. And now we can take that out. I'll go back and explain code. I, I am taking it because it's very easy to run through this. Okay, so, all right, so sure enough, we got a submit request, um, takes in the Gremlin client, and then the query, right? Um, and then here, um, it's going to actually just call gremlin.client, submit async. We're going to get back a dynamic. Uh, and then basically, you know, we're just going to query. So very simple, really. But here we got the catch logic. That's the reason why I kept this in here. Uh, here, I'm going, I don't, those, well, hold on. What I want to look at is what are we going to return? All right, and this should return uh, this should return a couple things. Actually, hold on one second. Right, sorry about that. I just need to grab some notes I wrote yesterday. So you can kind of see in here, uh, we, um, so it grabs it, and if it gets an exception, it's going to return me several different things, right? As part of the exception. And what we probably should do is, I mean, obviously this is a console app. It's just printing some things out. I think instead we should, um, we should return it. You know, we should return our own exception. Um, 
it's a little bit easier to understand. You know, that would be easier to deal with, right? I mean, I could just pass this back on, to be honest with you. But, you know, by doing that, that's actually what they do here. I think by throwing our own exception, you know, we can kind of package this up a little bit nicer. Love that, uh, that mute button or cough button, I should say. All right. So we're going to, we're going to say, uh, query exception. And in here, we'll do a public, and then this will uh, actually, oh no, yeah, exception. Um, so we'll inherit from the exception. And in here, we're going to um, we're going to add a couple properties in here. So first thing we will add is a uh, status code. And it doesn't really give you a set. We'll just do it like that. Well, give it a little bit of flexibility if you ever needed it for some reason. Um, the next we'll do the request charge. So this is what did it cost to run that query? Uh, then we're going to do they have a request charge. You have a total request charge. We're just going to do the request charge, uh, but we will return the server time. Um, then this be int uh, server time, and finally, where are they, there is also the activity ID. I'm not going to return that. I don't think we, we really need that. Really don't even need server time. Let's go, ahead, remember, let's go ahead and take that out. I always add that. And really, I really just need that status code. Uh, I can see you could do some things with the request charge. Um, so I'll keep that in there. Um, just trying to think, what does this... Has the status code, has the status attributes. Okay. Now let's, yeah, we can return this instead. I like that. Back here, instead of an int, we'll return that status code status code makes that just you know keeps that a little bit consistent that's good to do. um okay and just look at this more I go to the right screen Also in here. Okay. And then here, what are they doing with that? Yeah, see they're printing the status, which you can see they're they're pulling those two statuses out there. Uh And then we we'll probably want to capture that exception. Okay, so so we come back here. We got this query exception, query execution exception. So we're going to add these these two items in there. Everything else we're going to keep. You know, uh, we'll inherit it. I should say from exception. Um,
but not what I want. Okay, just keep on going back to there. That's nice. Uh, here. Okay. Oh, you know why? Because I know why. So. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, so back here. So let's go ahead and add, include our documentation. So it gets the status code of the execution, of the query execution. And this is going to return a value. The value is um, response status code representing the uh, Uh, status of the query execution. Exception execution. And here, uh, the request charge of the query. Cosmos. And here again, this is, I mean, so this is Cosmos specific. Um, Basically, what Gremlin.net does is it, it just allows you to pipe in you know, your yours, uh, your attributes that you need. And Cosmos is sticking that in. So this is going to return a decimal uh, representing the request charge of the query. All right, so that'll do that. Uh, and then we're going to have a public uh, query execution exception. And here, pass in the uh, response exception. As response exception. And we will, so in here, um, oh, we want to do base. And in the base, we're going to do. Exception message and response exception error exception. Well, actually, it should just be response exception. So we'll, the inner exception will be the, the exception returned. Um, oh, need to have that there. And then, uh, and then we will actually go here, right here. So um, you need to pull this value out. That's what this uh, uh, get value uh, or default doing, or get values of string, I should say, uh, which is actually calling this get values of default. So that, okay, that is already public static, so that's good. Um, so we'll go in here and gremlin dot. Uh, get value of string. Just comments. Now, actually, let's get into the string. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, so then we will say. Request charge equals. Okay. okay, what I want. Why would this status code be different? Oops. 
potentially could be. All right, so, so instead of this, we actually will return int. Sam, how's it going? I was having fun watching your uh, work, watching work on Unity this morning. That was yes. pretty cool. Oh, apparently Siri Sorry. thinks I'm talking to it. All right, so uh, so yeah, we're going to now. This will be status code equals, and then obviously we'll have to pass that to an int. There, like that. Um, <laughs> close friends, yeah. Apparently, I have to watch, watch how I say your name, uh, you know. Uh, all right, what am I missing here? Oh, the attributes. There we go. Here's one. Oh, I see what I'm doing. Okay. Helps if I read my own code. Attributes. It's in here. There we go. And this would come from the Response exception. Right? Why is it not working? So get value as string. All right, let's just type this. Wasn't doing a good job of just copy and pasting to get what I wanted. So we'll do gremlin dot. Value of string, response exception. Status attributes. That's the status code. Can I convert? Oh, can I convert string? Oh, okay. I. Uh, Can't do it. Uh, you have to you do a pass that way. You actually have to convert it. Okay, there we go. So there we've got that. Um, we will want this, this request charge. So we're going to do very similar here. So request charge equals convert to decimal. Gremlin dot get value of string. Response exception, static attributes. And then we'll that one. And then um, you know, look at this other code here. Uh, should also get this retry. Grab that value. And then we should have that in here. So public int. Uh, it's a retry after retry after ms. Number of milliseconds to wait before trying to clear it again. Let me just type this and I'll explain this for those who are new to Gremlin. This is really this is part of the way how Cosmos. And I said Gremlin. Really, this is a, this is more of a Cosmos concept here. The Cosmos, you have your R use, right? And you 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 
your throughput. So you're you're buying a guaranteed amount of throughput. Um, you have to buy a minimum 400, um, and, and basically throughput means it's the number of processing power, the, the in and out, so the I/O, um, and you know they come up with a, a mathematical number. And then, like I say, you you buy that's what you actually buy, right? Um, and typically, you, you say, hey, I want to buy 400 RUs, I want to buy 500, I want to buy 4,000, 40,000, what, whatever you need. And those RUs recycle every second, right? Um, so, what this, you know, what happens is if you run out of RUs, it, it doesn't slow down. So, like, like in Azure SQL database, right? If you run out of DTUs, if you're doing the DTU model, if you actually run out, it actually scales you down, it slows down the process to try to get you back down to your RUs. Yeah, exactly. You're buying a band bandwidth rate. Well. You actually buy a little bit more than just a bandwidth rate. I mean, because there, there's a little bit more to it. It's, they call it throughput. Um, Cause like I said, it includes the processing on the, on the machine. So, um, but it is a good analogy. But to, um, so if you run out of our use in that second, cause again, they recycle every second. If you go out, you get a 429 error, uh, HTTP status code 429. And when you get that, it will populate this uh, uh, this value here, which is a retry after the max equal vert to int uh, gremlin get value a string. So just getting to the point where I copy this. So it, it returns me this, uh, this attribute right here, this XMS retry after MS, right? Uh, it must be Microsoft, right? So they're, they're identifying it with this retry after milliseconds. So it'll give you a number of milliseconds you need to wait until you should be able to run that query again. Um, now, the interesting thing is something else comes in there. Um, it could actually take up, you know, it's not an exact science. Uh, and generally, I got to admit, generally, I, so, you know, I don't wait half a second or part of a second. I'll, I'll wait a whole second. It's generally what I do. Um, although admittedly, what I've been doing more recently is I've been using more of the, um, I'm not called autopilot anymore. Um, I forget what they're calling it now. Because it went, when they went GA with it, they renamed it. Because, you know, Microsoft can't ever keep the name of something you know, from preview to auto scale and yeah, they renamed it to auto scale um yeah it, it actually does handle most of this um this is really this is when it can't handle it because eventually it, it will time out itself because uh, I think it retries three times if I remember correctly. Um, but it will eventually time out itself. So at any rate, point being, I don't use this very much, right? Uh, but because I, you know, I mean, right at the moment I'm building this only for Copalooza, but you know, the intent was to actually build a, a ORM that could be used by others. Um, so I'm including that in our return. Because if that's what you're getting, that is what you're going to want to know. Like I said, generally what I've done in the past, what I did before what is now called auto scale, um, I actually would monitor those 429 errors um, if I was getting them. And then I would scale the database. I, I would actually do it in an Azure function. Um, up to a certain point, obviously, because you, you didn't want to, you know, Talk to Kevin Griffin about how he built a database that uh, automatically scaled and, and went crazy. Uh, but you know, so but now, like I said, I use auto scale and that handles a lot of my problems. All right. So anyway, so, so there we've got that exception that that will that will give me everything I need. Now we go back to here. Um, so here on our catch we will throw 
a uh, query execution exception passing in that exception. All right. Uh, New. I'm re I'm looking at it. What's wrong with that? I, that's a valid uh, exception. You, I do have to new it. All right, so there, we'll throw that, and then really we don't need any of this. Okay, we'll make that simple. Um, let's change it to EX, that's what I normally call those things. All right, so now we'll return that. Um, so that's our, our submit request. Uh, going back up to here, and there we, we now we query that. We call that query. We get back this result set. You know, uh, what you can see is it's basically a dynamic. In here, a dynamic result set, and then we can do different things with this, right? Um, excuse me. I'm just, I think what this is complaining about. Uh, because I, in the project settings, I, uh, I, I set the, I enabled the nullable. And yeah, that's why I got that warning on there. Um, uh, Okay. That message. All right. So those two methods are fine. Um, we're gonna eventually get rid of this. All right. So now the the, the last thing I want to do in here. Um, so all the what is going through here, where it's just printing this to it, it's serializing it, and then it's just printing out the output to uh, what should we call it? To the console um obviously what we want to do instead is we want to return that so let's just let's do a we're gonna create a new class called query results okay and in here so in here we're gonna return some some similar things so first thing we're return is these results um so in here again we get that result set <clears throat> excuse me and uh they serialize that right and that makes sense so um and it's for each result in the result set so let's have a the result is just a dynamic nullable dynamic so we're gonna have here the dynamic the result. Results. So this is actually really should be the result set. public uh, result set of dynamic results get set that's not what I want actually what I wanted to return is a list of dynamic Turn that we'll, we'll initialize it we want that and then um we 
we'll also return the status code. And we'll return the um, the uh, request charge. And um, yeah, I mean the only other thing that might be worth returning is the server time. Um, yeah, why not? you might want metrics to do some metrics on that right so um there's what we're going to be we're going to be adding here um so that's actually some of this code in there So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a new query results. And in here, we will we'll take in a result set of dynamic. Yeah. And then we're gonna kind of take some of this code in here in this example, you know, right from Microsoft documentation um copy that Um, yeah, sure enough, we don't need it for that string. What we do is we do results dot add. Here we go. That part will be good, and then basically want to do what they're doing here. This print status results. Uh, this. And. And then fine. Okay, so now we got that. Now we can say status code convert to int. Basically, the same thing we just did a moment ago on the exception. Here, this would be uh, total. Quest charge equals. Convert int. Nope, this is decimal. Because you do get you get a, uh, a decimal value back for your request charge. Because so it will be, I mean, like I, I did a quick test yesterday. You know, if you remember, if you were following yesterday, we 
we had like the first uh, the first string we were creating here right this adding this vertex it costs like 27 RUs. 27 I think it was like 27.43 RUs. right so it returns a number like that then we also want to return okay so we got the status code now we want this server time so this will be server time equals convert get 32 gremlin get value at string result status attributes and this is going to be x ms total server time ms let's see if that's yeah, it's not working over there but oh yeah it's right there oh that's on mine never mind all right there now we so that should return all that this just uh Clean this up just a little bit. I don't need all those brackets. Add a little bit of white space. There we go. Now I'll come back and add some documentation a little bit later. So now, in this execute method, Now we can just do return uh, new query results. Submit request. Remnant client query result. And because that's not what's returned yet, we had this void. Now we're going to return a query results. That. This. What? If Gremlin already defines a method called X. I no longer need that method. All right, there, and that, that will work. Uh, obviously it won't work with just this endpoint like that. Um, so the next thing we need to do in here, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead. Actually enhance this method just a little bit more. Um, here, what we're going to do we're going to pass in a gremlin server and I know that's redundant give me an error but that's okay And here we will give it the query, sorry, string query, uh, string as a gremlin endpoint, string gremlin. Uh, this is actually a password. Well, we'll, we'll keep the primary. We'll, we'll say, uh, yeah, we won't say primary key, it's a key. Uh, string database and string container. Um, 
And then finally, we will have an hit port. And we'll default it for three because generally it's what's going to be anyways. And here, that. And we would just call the we would return. Change the order of these. Okay. And then this would be return execute. Run server. Uh, oh, sorry. Query. Run the server. gives you uh, some different ways to call this, depending on where you're coming from. Um, oh, okay. I was trying to figure why I was saying I wasn't using it. I'm going to leave the, yeah. I know I'm not actually using these. It actually changes to gremlin endpoint. Okay. Um, I know these aren't being used, but I'm keeping them in there to remind me to do something. So there, I've got that execute. I've got that execute. Um, yeah, and part of the reason why I'm doing this, you know, is so I could maybe create my Gremlin client somewhere. Um, I'm sorry, my gremlin server, what I meant to say. Um, and then share that. Yeah, so I'm not keep on recreating that because we don't necessarily. There's a time hit every time you create that, obviously. So, I don't think anything else I want to do here. Actually, add a method. I'm gonna do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. All right. There. Well, okay. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. There we go. So now, I really don't. So that should do. I should do everything we want to do. Now, the one other thing I want to do, I'll make sure I'm saying this correctly. If we go to portal, uh, look in here. You know, I'm making sure I'm saying this correctly. Uh, so you have a database, right, which in here is Copalooza, right? But then these are a graph, right? Uh, yeah, it, sure enough, technically it actually is a container. I mean, that's actually the way how Microsoft has implemented it. Uh, but let's just change this to be graph because that would be more consistent with the way how Gremlin refers to it. Put your graph within your database. So just making that simple little change. Um, yeah, so now we have that. Sure, check my calendar real quick. Yeah, I was pretty sure I didn't have anything for a couple hours. All right. But I don't have a couple hours. I have to prep for that meeting. Really cool stuff we're doing. We're doing uh, audio bricks, right? So, uh, well, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Uh, basically, think of like, uh, you have like a content something you would read. It's actually designed to be read in, in, in 15 minutes. Uh, but then we actually have a audio file that you can, you know, like a podcast you can listen to separately. So uh, kind of meaning to talk about 
how that's going to work today. Really looking forward to that meeting. Um, all right, so I've got these. Now what I want to do, we're going to add a new project. Now we need to create something that, that will actually use that, that we just created. We're going to create a console app. Uh, and this is going to be detail learn code uh, gremlin or we'll, we'll, we'll say cosmos gremlin executor or script gremlin. We put the right directory. Great. And for now, this will just reference the project. We're gonna project reference this one. And what we'll do, uh, we'll just hard code this for a moment. Okay, first thing we're gonna do. We're going to add class settings. Um, and I'm just doing this so I don't have to keep on typing everything. We'll eventually get rid of this. But this will take in. We also have a couple of properties in here. It's a public static string. Uh, We're gonna have endpoint. Public string, static string, uh, off key. And um, database. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this off screen. Uh, can't show this on screen because it actually does copy the whole, thing. you know, it shows it. It's interesting. Some of the, uh, some of the stuff in the Azure portal will hide, you know, the keys. And, but have a co copy button to make it real easy. Others, like Cosmos, will just show the key right there in the open. Sure enough, database is code palooza and the graph. There, now I have that in there. Now, what we'll do, um, <clears throat> let's just do a very simple test first. We'll um, actually even do a simpler one. So we will 
we will uh, just say our results equals uh, gremlin. should not call this gremlin uh let's call this uh uh all that and i do need to make this static that's what i was seeing And then um, going back here, so we're gonna say our results equals uh, gremlin query. Actually, that was right. Gremlin query dot execute, and you know, we'll call the second method. So uh, we'll just do a very simple GV, All right? Uh, and then here, well, for six, what I want to see, we will, uh, so settings dot, uh, uh, endpoint, settings dot key, settings dot database, and settings dot graph. Okay. And so sure enough, we get back Thank you for being so helpful. Yeah, we get this for results back. All right, so now we can do console right line. Uh, and we can just do a simple, uh, uh, we'll just uh, results dot uh, results dot count, All right? Which I think will be zero in here. There. So now, if I run this, um, actually verify what we do have in this. I think I deleted everything. I might have one option. Okay, I have, I have one option. Uh, let's go ahead and delete it first. Now, if we set this. Our uh, run it project. Oh, up in here. here we go. Input stream was not in a format. Uh, well, that was interesting. That's right, it will return me a decimal. Which is so awesome. I mean, I'm getting decimals of, of, a, of a millisecond. I did forget about that. Let me just change that to decimal. And I think here. You know what, I think this returns a decimal also. So there, we've got those. Yeah, I run this. So sure enough, we should see a count of zero, which is what I expected. Um, I just wanted to see this object completely. Come on. Quick 
watch. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, anyway. So that works. So now, just to see what would happen, make sure this is doing what we expect if we. Run this query that we're, yeah, you know, that we'll be trying to run here a little bit. I'll run it. There we see one result came back. Uh, oh, why I'm not. Watch. Has it not returned that? Okay. Let's uh, let's do this. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and sure enough, and that's what I was expecting. It was just the I don't know why the quick watch isn't working for me correctly. Um, that's kind of weird. But it, so it returns back the object I created, right? And that's that's basically what I would expect to see. Um, cool. So now, yeah, let me spend a couple more minutes. Or we stop. Um, so now what we want to do, we want to be able to read in that file, right? This uh, Gremlin file that we were creating here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to um, okay, where is this file located at? folder all right you can't see what I'm, doing. I'm just copying the path and here we're gonna say um, file oops var file equals new uh, stream reader Uh, schema that grandma uh, and then we're just going to do while line equals file read line oh, I'll definitely screw that up that's what I get for I'm looking at I, sure enough on the side monitor I've got the example code how to do this because I didn't remember what Oh, okay. While line equals file line doesn't equal null. And sure enough, right now we'll just do a console console right line. Just a simple uh, validation. So it's not going to actually run anything. It's just reading through those lines and printing them all should be.
Maybe. look like an air when I first saw it. There we go. So just printed everything. I mean, no big deal. Nothing nothing special there. But now what we want to do, I do think we want um so we in the file. Put that down here. I'm going to add in a uh, execution counter. Zero. Um, and then this is just going to run, man. So it's it's not going to return any queries, right? Uh, we're really just meaning for this to run like a like the query like that script is running, right? Um, so what I want to do is I add this whole ability to have a um, comment. So we'll, we'll, what we'll do in here is if um, string is uh, not string is null or white space uh, line and line and not string I'm oh, sorry line starts with right there we go so basically if it's not a, a blank line um and if it doesn't start with that then we're going to uh again we'll just do a validation before we start writing queries but we will uh we will uh <clears throat> just do a console uh, right line uh, line and we'll execution counter Increment that, and down here we will. Okay. Actually, we need to do that. Console right line encounter, and then this should. Let's see how many main lines we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 2, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so in theory, this should equal 20, this should print out 27. Uh, and sure enough, it did. Okay. So now, really, all, we're just going to gremlin query. We're going to do, let's see here, our results equals gremlin query. Line and we okay. There we go. Um And then what I'm gonna do is if uh, results status code 
does not equal 200. Our console. We're going to throw uh, an exception. New exception. Status code results status code return. Oh. Probably should make that a little bit nicer, a little bit more, but we'll, we'll want to do that. And then if we get down here. Console right line. report a status that we're done and then the other thing we should do is otherwise you might be sitting here while it's turning and you don't know it's actually doing anything uh, yeah for now I was gonna say I really should add well no, I can't add okay so let's uh Let me yeah, let's go here. Right. Sorry. Console. Ah. Console right. Console right. So that should do what I want to do. Now, the one before I run that, drop anything that's already there. Now we should have nothing in here. I apologize if you hear my dog in the background. I don't know what he's going off about. Okay, fair enough. I have nothing in my database now. Now I should be able to run this. And we should start seeing that it's executing. See the dots is executing each statement. And there, executed 27 gremlin statements. And if we go into, back to the portal, execute that, and sure enough, we see all our items. There we go. We, uh, We'll do it. Cool. So what I want to do, let's see here. Let's go ahead and delete that. This is, I mean, this works and really suits the needs of what code lose and need, right? Because, but again, I want to, I do want to make this a little bit nicer. Uh, so a couple things I want to do. I have a couple to do's here to do. Add a prompt for the uh, script file to run. Right, that way you can tell it which to run instead of hard coding a file because that's not very useful. And then we're also going to add it to do um, show a progress bar of, of the execution. 
it was, I mean, it was great I had those dots, right? So at least I knew it was still progressing along. Or a progress bar would be nice, that way I know where it's going. You know, because I mean, here's one of the things that this could be used for. This can be used for like pre-populating data, right? And you might have a lot of data you need to pre-populate. So having, having this in there uh, will really help that along quite a bit. All right, so with that, I am going to end it. I, I'm over my slot of time. Um, I hope everyone did enjoy everything today. Let's see who we got up on Twitch right now. Um, oh, well, before I do anything, I want to uh, get started. Um, that's of my people I follow. Sam Woodall is the only one who, who's online right now, but that's a uh, graphics. Um, he's a graphic artist, does a lot of great things. Definitely someone, if you're if you're looking to do some, some graphic things, 